Action Gears, brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. There's no question that wheels and tires have a huge impact on the look and feel of a vehicle. And the aftermarket is full of bolt-on choices. But what if you want to completely change the look and the feel of the vehicle and go with a different wheel and tire combination? Well, that's usually more involved than just bolting something on. We're going to show you how to do that. Now, what we have here is a classic old crusty truck that has a ton of potential, and it's definitely a candidate for a wheel and tire upgrade. Now, what we've got is a late 60s M715 Army truck that's been outfitted with a civilian J truck cab and the 401 V8. Now, since Jeep made both the military and civilian models of this truck, most of the parts are interchangeable. Now, one of the cool things about the M715 is that it came from the factory with a Dana 60 in the front and a Dana 70 in the rear. So, they're plenty strong. But those old military split safety rims don't give you a lot of tire options, especially if you want to fill out the big radius fender wells. Now, most people's thoughts on a project like this is to just swap in some newer Dana 60 axles or rock wells or something like that. The problem is, those are getting hard to find, and they're expensive. Then you got to put them in, you got to build a suspension for them, and then you got to get wheels and tires for those. So it seems like a waste to do all that if you can make these original axles work, and you can, because there's a lot of companies out there like Vintage Power Wagons or BJ's Off-Road to specialize in M715 trucks and full-size Jeeps. So we are not going to swap the axles, but we are going to do some about those wheels. Okay, the problem with most military vehicles is that the bolt patterns are weird. So you're not gonna find a custom replacement wheel for that bolt pattern in a catalog somewhere, you're just not. So you're gonna have to have something custom made, which means you're gonna have to do some measurements and do some calculating to get what you want. Here's how to do it. Okay, the first thing you need to decide is what the goal is here. How do you want the new wheels and tires to fit? Now on this old crusty truck, we want to get rid of this old, tall, skinny look and go wider and taller to fill out these big, huge radius fender wells. But how big and wide do we go? Well, if you'll measure from the center of the axle to the tightest part on the fender, you can see that's a roughly 24 inches. And if we double that, that tells us that a 48-inch tall tire will fit in this wheel well with no clearance. Now, since we want clearance, we're going to drop down to a 41 inch tall tire. That's going to fit really nice and give us plenty of clearance. Okay, for tire width, we want something nice and fat. Something about 14 inches wide once it's all mounted up. And something that fits the bill perfectly are these IROX from Intergo Tire. As you can see, they're 41 inches tall, 14 and a half inches wide, and have that great aggressive tread that Interco is so famous for. As you can see, this is kind of what the truck's gonna look like at the new ride height, so that's gonna be great. Okay, now that we have the tire decided, we're gonna set it aside and get those stock wheels off. Now, to fill these new tires out properly, we need at least an 11 inch wide rim. And as you can see, those stock brake drums are huge. So we're gonna jump up from the original 16 inch rim to a 20 inch rim. So the new rims that we need are 20 by 11s. Okay, once you've decided on your rim and tire size, now you're ready for your backspacing. Now obviously you wanna set it to where you're not hitting any suspension components or body panels or anything like that. But this is also where you can set the stance of the vehicle. Now to get the wider look that we're after, we want the rubber to come out three to five inches past this fender well. So by measuring the distance from the wheel flange to the fender edge and factoring in the width of the new wheels and tires, I was able to come up with a four inch backspace. And that's gonna give us about four inches of rubber sticking past the fender and roughly 10 inches inside the fender for a fat, aggressive look. So we need a 20 by 11 inch wheel with a four inch backspace to fit a stock M715 bolt pattern. Where the heck are you gonna find something like that? Easy, Red Barn Customs, check it out. Luke Walker started Red Barn Customs years ago because he couldn't find any wheels for his truck. One of the things that makes Red Barn Customs so unique 
is the fact that they will make wheels for virtually anything. They start with a precision cut center and then they hand weld that to the rim. If you need more strength, they can add gussets, rock rings, all kinds of things. Also, this adds to the cool factor. And these aren't weak, flimsy wheels either. These are heavy duty, hardcore wheels built to take whatever abuse you can throw at them. They're made for jumping, yeah. crashing into things, hitting things without bending. Yeah. The tire's gonna take the abuse where the rim won't or something else will fail. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, this is a really cool looking wheel and super heavy duty, weighing it at almost 70 pounds. But the best part is, if you take your time with the measurements, you know they're gonna fit exactly like you want them to. And once we send those wheels off and get them powder coated and mount these tires on there, you're gonna be shocked how good old Krusty's gonna look.